It was my dream to get an anime deal before I turned 30 years old. At age 26, I signed that deal. It was kind of a meme, but it actually happened. And now today, I'm going to be telling you guys about how I got the anime deal, what the production process is, or how you can get your own anime deal. And also, I'll talk about some of the challenges of creating an adaptation from a manga or webtoon to an anime. Now, before we get into the video, make sure to drop a like for the YouTube algorithm. Subscribe as well, because a lot of you guys are watching these videos. You're not subscribing. If you guys want to learn more about the anime manga webtoon industry, you should be subscribing. Let's get right into it. What is the process of getting an anime adaptation? There has been a lot of different ways to get an anime adaptation. The most frequent is light novel to anime, light novel to manga to anime, or manga to anime, or video game to anime. And these are all in Japan. Now, if you're an international creator, so that means you're not in Japan, what has been the historical process for that? There has been French manga, Manfra to anime, which is done by Tony Valente with Radiant. There has been video games to anime with kind of Castlevania, but you could argue Castlevania is a Western animation. Cyberpunk is an example of a video game to anime. There's also animation, Western animation to anime, which is done by Futurama's recent anime. Not Futurama. I'm not, what am I saying? Futurama. Rick and Morty's recent anime. There is also obviously Webtoon to anime, which has been done by Solo Leveling, God of High School, Noblesse, all these other different anime productions, right? What do all those things have in common? In Japan, it's a lot easier because you're in the Japanese industry. Japanese producers are always looking out for new content to make into anime. So you're a little bit more tapped in. From there, it's like, you just need to be a semi-popular project that, that gets before the eyes of a Japanese producer that's interested in bringing the anime to committee or whatever. If you're international though, what is the process? You need an intellectual property of any sort of medium that is popular, but also could cross over into anime pretty well. What is a good example of this? Obviously the cyberpunk project, cyberpunk 2077 adapted into an anime with edge runners. You could argue that that project somewhat not be fitted for an anime, but the way they did it was adapted really well. Rick and Morty, you could argue that project is not well fitted for an anime. Scott Pilgrim versus the world, I think has anime style tendencies in the live action, which is why it was able to fit into the, into the Japanese anime space. But it was also adapted by Sai and Saru, who happens to do like a lot of weird anime stuff. But a lot of the webtoons that are adapted to anime feel very natural, right? Soul Leveling, God of High School, Tower of God, those are all like very anime-esque concepts. So that adaptation feels a lot more natural than a lot of what they're doing in Hollywood right now. The Hollywood stuff is kind of crazy. They're like Terminator, the anime, Lord of the Rings, the anime. It's it's a little bit out of control in my opinion. But what do they have all in common? They have a lot of money and they have a lot of backing, right? But if you're an individual like me, you want to be creating objects like God of High School, Tower of God that have potential to adapt to anime instead of be picked up for a Hollywood live action or a Western animation like a Disney movie or something, right? Because when producers over here in the US or other places see your project, they're going to be looking for where the best fit for it is. And if you're interested in creating anime, make sure that your project is an anime style project and make sure that it is blown up and has a lot of people watching it and checking it out. Obviously, the more numbers you have behind it, the easier it is to get any producer to want to pick you up because the more fans you have, the more likely people will check out the anime and also the more proof of concept that people like your stuff. So now that you kind of know the process of getting an anime, you have a blown up IP, you have some sort of producer that can bring it over to Japan and then Japan has to accept that and be down to make it. And whether it's a Japanese studio or a production committee or directly Netflix or Crunchyroll or another streaming platform. Doesn't really matter. It just it has to be pitched by some sort of producer that's going to take it, try and take it to anime. So that's the general process. It's really simplified. It's really hard to get any sort of series that will blow up and obviously be popular enough to actually be adapted to any sort of animation. So easier said than done. But what has been my process to getting an anime myself? So I started off as a novelist, as you guys probably know, from 14 to like 22, I was writing novels, started doing manga when I was in my 20s, early 20s, and then eventually got a serialization deal to do God Game as a webtoon. At the time, there were not a lot of like webtoon to anime adaptations when I started serializing, but this is something that's that's recently been happening. And when I write God Game, I don't think too much about the webtoon space or even the Korean space. I think a lot about the Japanese space. I almost write the series for a Japanese audience because obviously my dream was to create an anime. And so every single series that I really write is meant for like, you know, shonen or almost like written for like a Japanese magazine in some ways. And because
because of that and the very anime-esque feel to God game, it's only natural that when a producer or anyone sees it, they're totally down to bring it to anime. They would think of anime before they would think of live action versus video game versus anything else, right? They, if your project like screams anime, that is more likely that people who are producing anime are going to notice it. And so this was a very lucky thing that happened to me, which is that my publisher was willing to invest very heavily into making this project an anime. And a lot of stars had to align for this to happen. One, I had to be pretty experienced in the webtoon space to make a project that was doing pretty well on the platform, not just on the platform. A lot of people pirate God game for some reason, which is weird because it's free to read. A lot of people have just consumed or read this series in particular. Two, the stars had to align that I was already doing a lot of different projects, not just God game. I've done just a goblin, Samurai Otora, Mad Gay, which is also going to anime and a whole different slate with a lot of different publishers. All that. It's, it's just kind of crazy, right? So there was some sort of name behind the project. The third thing that had to align was that my publisher just had a crap ton of money and they were going to spend it on this project. And they were also willing to make it as an anime instead of a live action or any other thing that would be easier to make in America. And then the other star had to align was that this series happened to be the number one series on the platform. Naturally, it would be have first dibs for any sort of adaptation, which is extremely lucky. And I'm very fortunate for that. So I mean, like a part of it, you know, part of why I got the anime deal is, is obviously, hey, like I've been working for over 10 years creating anime style projects in a country where anime was not before it was even popular in the in the United States. I was creating anime style projects pretty much since I was in elementary school. I was writing manga and creating it and selling to kids on the, on the playground. So I've been creating manga and anime style projects my entire life almost. And it's only recently, obviously, that I've gained traction on, on, on all that. So a lot of it has been hard work over many years and honing my crafts. Still a lot to learn. None of my projects are perfect. I'm not saying that. I think it's been a lot of hard work. And then also a lot of the stars aligning, like, you know, this, all the stuff that I said before, which is like a lot of luck. Maximizing your luck comes from working hard over many years. So I think if you guys were to ever take anything away from like my journey, it's like work really hard for many years. Make sure that your project is adaptable to anime. You need to make this project popular. If you want it to go to anime, it has to be a banger and it has to be popular. Sure, there's anime adaptations that happen for projects that are not popular, but if you want <laughs> the easier sell, the more popular your series, your chances go up exponentially. People are going to want to make it, make stuff happen with it. People from all over Hollywood and stuff have, have really approached me on live action and American uh, animations and video games and stuff like that. But obviously my goal has always been Japanese anime, not so much the other stuff. I mean, the other stuff is great. It's it's peripheral for me and I, and I love it. Now let's get into some of the challenges that I have experienced and also foresee for adapting my projects to anime. Now the natural issue with adapting any sort of Western project to anime, and this is usually why Japanese studios will look at you if you're a Western creator and be like, we're going to charge you more money. It's because a lot of the Western creators in IP require a lot of overhaul to work in the Japanese anime market. What does that mean? If you look at Scott Pilgrim or if you look at cyberpunk edge runners, they had to do a lot of overhaul to the narrative, the concepts, to the mannerisms, the animation style. They probably had to build a lot of it from scratch instead of like relying on Japanese manga panels, which they can probably just rip one to one and just remake it and animate them pretty much. So when you're working with a Western property, the studios are usually doing a lot more work trying to adapt that thing. The less work you have to do, which means that the more Japanese feeling your project is, the easier it is to get the anime adaptation. Lord of the Rings gets an anime because it's Lord of the Rings. But when you think about like your project or my project, the more removed it is away from anime, the harder it is gonna, for you to bring it to a Japanese producer or any sort of producer and be like, hey, this is, you can see this as an anime, right? They're gonna look at it if it's like, you know, you know, a Batman ripoff or like some American comic and they're gonna be like, no, I don't see it. I don't see it. It doesn't have Japanese mannerisms, doesn't have, not written like a Japanese series. It doesn't obey the laws of like Kisho Tenketsu, which is what manga storytelling methodology is based off of. They're gonna be like, no, this doesn't, this doesn't work at all. Why would we take this unless you're Lord of the Rings or Terminator, right? For any creators out there, make sure that your series is very like true to the Japanese medium of anime, if that's your goal with your series. And obviously with God Game, I wrote it in a way that was very like Japanese, you know, in, a, in, a, in, a, in certain ways, right? Very, very Asian and very shonen in the way that I created the characters, the way that I showcased the scenes, the way that the fights go down, even the mannerisms to which people yell at each other or make comedic jokes and that kind of stuff. And a lot of it's because I've always seen God Game in a lot of all my series, almost as anime, I pretty much create with the hopes of like a Japanese audience being able to enjoy the series as well. Some other challenges. I think another challenge that is really relevant to God Game in particular is because it's a webtoon to anime adaptation. If we go through the webtoon to anime adaptation pipeline, most of them, in my opinion, 
have been failures. So if I look at God of High School, animation done by Studio Mappa, they've done a lot of great work. That project was horrible because, not because of the animation, but because of the writing. They adapted a hundred webtoon episodes into a season of anime. Absolutely insane. It felt like super rushed. It was just way too much content. That is something that I'm trying to avoid. And the reason that they did that was not because they were doing anything super wrong, but when you think about webtoon episodes, a webtoon episode is 50 to 60 panels, let's say. That is not a lot of time in an animation. So webtoon narratives naturally move at a very fast pace versus like Japanese manga, which are technically double in length per chapter compared to a webtoon. Japanese manga, you might be able to fit two chapters into the first half of, of an anime episode, like 13 minutes. And then maybe the second half is another episode or chapter. When you think about webtoon episodes, it's not just one-to-one -one like that, you know? And if you were to adapt things like individual episodes like that, it would just feel super sped up. And that's exactly what happened with God of High School. Only way to adapt webtoons really is to kind of either elongate certain scenes or to add scenes to make things feel more fleshed out and slower paced so that it can work in a television, anime, or live action media. It's a difficult task. It requires a lot of overhaul in my opinion. And this is a problem not because of the content of what's in webtoon, but because the medium of webtoon is so fast paced and there's, you know, each episode is just significantly shorter than a manga chapter. I think pacing is definitely something that I'm very wary about going into this anime production. And then I'll say that the final kind of roadblock that I've seen is that anime is so popular. Anime is so popular and I'm not sure if Japan can keep up with the enormous demand that's coming from outside of Japan. Why do I think this? A lot of the top Japanese anime studios are booked out for years many years and that's because a lot of these anime productions take many years to make when by the time you see the trailer they've already been working on it for from probably multiple years and it was greenlit a long time ago and japan already has their hands full with a lot of the light novels manga video games and stuff that's coming out of japan and they're adapting their stuff already on top of that anime is one of the biggest things in the entire world one piece the live action was the most viewed television series on netflix for the second half of last year it is crazy how big anime is and so everyone in Hollywood too is also starting to com uh, commission anime as well. Like you think uh, you think about Warner Brothers with, with their Suicide Squad anime, Terminator, Lord of the Rings, Star Wars. Everyone's trying to get anime made. These corporations are all trying to snap up all the big studios because they have a ton of money. Makes sense. When you have creatives like myself trying to get anime made, when you're going to those studios, those are who you're competing with. You're competing against Disney. You're, I'm not competing against like another me. The ones we're competing against are like Disney, you know? And it's, it's kind of crazy trying to get studios that are down to down to work with individual creatives when they can work with someone in Japan, right? That, you know, had kind of already like a more Japanese style project. Those are kind of some of the roadblocks that I've seen, but also that I foresee as well. I'm going into a anime adaptation of God game. Now what? For me, obviously I have to keep trying to make this anime happen, try and make it the best I can. For you guys, what is the, what is the big takeaway that I think you guys can take from this video? I think one, learning from the pipeline of IP to anime, what that looks like, kind of like in the, I talked about earlier in the, in the video. Secondly, thinking about my journey and how I position myself in the right place to get an anime and be one of the first international creators, individual creators to get an anime adaptation deal. And then secondly, like learning a little bit from like the roadblocks that I've kind of had. I think that there are some roadblocks that are just naturally inevitable, uh, you know, especially as international anime projects are relatively new. These are roadblocks that everyone in the industry that is even the Disney's, they're all facing the same, the same roadblocks as well. And so thinking about those as you're going into your project is also a consideration as well. So if you guys found this video very useful, hopefully you can comment lotion. That's a special secret word. If you reach the end of the video, I'll know that you finished. Drop a like for the algorithm and join our Patreon and check out my other projects if you're interested in supporting me, my studio, my career, my projects. Thanks so much for watching guys. Comment any questions about the anime industry if you have any. Peace.